Tuesday, I was incredibly anxious, like so many others, after hearing that a verdict had been reached in the Derek Chauvin trial. I was afraid that despite all of the evidence, including the video of what happened, he still would not be found guilty. I had great foreboding of what would happen next if that happened. I exhaled agreement and relief at the first guilty verdict, then the second, and the third. Shelvin, unlike so many others, was being held accountable for what he did. I got onto social media to read what people were saying. I mostly shared other people's reactions rather than my own. I read a lot of thoughtful things, some claiming justice, others accountability, and still others hope towards a change to the system. Most suggested that there was more work to be done. But one person's remarks upset me immediately. Nancy Pelosi said, thank you, George Floyd, for sacrificing your life for justice, for being there to call out to your mom, now heartbreaking that was. And because of you, your name will always be synonymous with justice. Now, I actually admire Nancy Pelosi, the only woman in US history to serve as the Speaker of the House. Now twice, from 2007 to 2011, and from 2019 to the present. I have heard people speak of her political demise from both ends of the political spectrum so many times, only to see her strength and resolve carry her forward. She's also been very open how she has been formed and guided by her Catholic faith, even as her justice positions often go against certain less inclusive church doctrines. But I haven't been able to let go of her statement, even though she has since amended it. She talked with George Floyd's family, thanked them, and blessed them for their, quote, grace and dignity. But I just can't, at the moment, get past Pelosi's earlier statement, in part, I believe, because of this week's gospel. Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. George Floyd did not lay down his life for others. He made no decision to sacrifice himself for justice. If there was justice, George Floyd would likely be receiving or finished with drug treatment. Armand Aubrey would likely be out jogging. Richard Brooks would be home with his family and Breonna Taylor would have woken up this morning in her bed. And the list goes on and on of black and brown people whose actions should have been met with the reasonable responses that white people expect for themselves in this country. Some would have been subject to accountability for certain actions handed down by examination in what should be a stable, just system. But all of them would reasonably still be alive. None of them were called by their actions to sacrifice their life for justice. Jesus, the good shepherd in John's gospel, chooses to lay down his life for his sheep. And he makes it crystal clear that no one forced him into this decision, that he made it willingly. He made it in the hope 
of birthing something new. You see, in the first century, Jews were without justice. Jews like Jesus himself. Jesus willingly gives his life for those entrusted to him, while also insisting that there are others beyond the fold who also listen to his voice. Now, we may have moments in our lives where we are called to be like the good shepherd rather than the hired hand, risking for those whom we are charged to care for. But we should never lose the fact that in this gospel, in this story, we are primarily the sheep. The call here is not the sacrifice of our life, but rather to trust in our good shepherd, trust in Jesus, trust in God. And part of that trust is staying with all the other sheep, all of humanity, practicing fidelity to one another. Now, now I have to be honest here. The idea of being a sheep is not particularly attractive to me. I've never personally desired to be a sheep in any of Jesus' stories. I've never thought of sheep as particularly intelligent animals, and I've never liked the idea of depending on someone else to care and rescue me. I thought of myself, if not being worthy of a shepherd, at the very least being sheepdog material. But my negative view of sheep was actually challenged one day. I took, uh, we went as a family to Wheeler Farm and they were having a big day of activities. And one of them was a demonstration of sheepdog herding. And I, I watched these sheep, again, who, who I, you know, I went right to the gospel and thought about sheep and being herded and they get separated, you know, going off on their own of, of needing that guidance. But I watched these three sheep as this dog attempted to herd them. And these three sheep stayed with one another, stayed. They, they almost looked like a flock of birds running around, always with eyes on the dog because they knew together they were at least the equal of the dog. And as they stayed together, they ultimately were cared for. And it was only when one ran off on his own that the dog really took the initiative to drive him back to the other sheep. You know, see, that, that's the point here in the Good Shepherd analogy. We, the sheep, are called to stay together called in fidelity to care for one another as God cares and loves us, to remain with others when they are threatened, to re reunite with those of a different fold, to demand accountability, not just under the worldview of the hired hand, but to ground everyone in the well-being of the model of care of the Good Shepherd. We have so much work to do to move to a place of justice for all. And it's so hard. And I'd like to sit back at times, not get involved, not uh, uh, risk. But under the Good Shepherd, we are called to stick with one another, to care for one another, to be the hope for one another in full community. Thanks be to God.